Hi friends, it's Wesley. I'd spent some time over the last few days looking at all the different options for Linux native digital audio workstations, and I realized in the process as I was going through these and talking about them that the content really wasn't all that interesting. So instead of focusing on Linux native DAWs in this video, I want to share with you why I really use Linux for audio production. I'll still, of course, talk about the various options for digital audio workstations, but that's not going to be the focus of this video. We're going to talk a little bit more about workflows and really why you might want to choose Linux for audio production. Let's get started. There's really a surprising number of DAWs that run natively on Linux, and there's a long list of audio-related software for Linux that I wouldn't really consider a DAW. For instance, Audacity is not a DAW, it's a sound editor. It doesn't support very basic real-time track effects, MIDI, synth, or sample instruments. It's a fantastic open source sound editor and offers some unique features that many DAWs don't offer, but it's definitely not a DAW. LMMS is also not a DAW. It's never supported audio recording, only supports half the plugin formats for Linux. And it makes me feel like when I started making music on FL Studio version 4 before it had audio recording built in. Check this out! Yes, I'm getting old. Sunvox, which is very near and dear to my heart, is not a DAW. It's an incredible piece of software that can run on pretty much any device you throw at it, produce otherworldly sounds thanks to the modular nature and tracker pattern sequencer, but it's not a DAW and doesn't support plugins at all. I could go on for hours, but instead I'll tell you the best options for digital audio workstations that run on Linux. Far and away, the most popular and longest running open source DAW that's Linux native is Ardor. If you're not familiar with Ardor, some of the first videos I made on this channel detail its use. It's a great choice for producing music and otherwise processing audio on Linux. And Harrison Mixbus is a version with excellent sounding integrated channel strips for a more analog feel. Another DAW that's been used on Linux in some form or another for a very long time, even before it was available natively, is Reaper. Reaper is actually my top choice when it comes to Linux DAWs. It has an unlimited full featured demo, and the license is priced so affordably that anyone can manage to buy it. This thing is powerful, but at times it reminds me of old versions of Sony's Acid, and I actually used Acid back before it was Sony, but was Sonic Foundry. Again, old. Moving on. Traction Waveform is a great choice for free DAWs. It offers a unique workflow, some interesting take effect capabilities, and decent core set of instruments and effects. It's my recommendation for any musician just looking to get started recording. Bitwig is literally a cult of disenchanted Ableton Live users, but if you like Ableton Live Workflow, it's probably the best choice for you for Linux native. Aside from that, it makes MIDI MPE first class and also offers some cool microtonal notation editing. I got a free pared down version of it with my Sincel Morph, RIP Morph, and used it literally once. Renoise is the only tracker I've ever used that I would consider a DAW, just because it does offer support for plugins, and the plugin chains remind me a lot of Ableton Workflow. If all you want is a sampler and tracker, Redux is a simplified version and probably the best sampler VST plugin available on any platform. If you love sampling, check it out. Zrhythm is beta software and failed to build on my machines, so I can't tell you much about it. I've seen some excitement around it though. At the end of the day, choosing a DAW to use on Linux will be similar to choosing a DAW on Windows or Apple-based machines. You'll gravitate toward tools with the workflow that makes the most sense to you, and that's what I really want to talk about in this video. I've always been a bit leery and disgusted with the mindset that you need to spend hundreds or thousands of dollars on the latest plugins and software to make good music. I know that to be false. I originally installed Linux on an old laptop to extend its life. Then I realized there's actually a ton of audio software that's available on Linux. I spent maybe a year learning to make sounds with Pure Data, C Sound, and Super Collider to a small degree. What I learned getting more interested in the underlying DSP and building blocks of audio production is that you can solve pretty much any problem through a Linux mindset. That is, combining many smaller tools to accomplish a bigger goal. This shift in mindset totally changed the way I thought about creating and recording music, but it also fundamentally changed the way I worked. By breaking down each musical challenge into its fundamental parts, then attacking those smaller parts with the most suitable tools, I broke myself free from working in the same DAW with the same boring plugins every track. I pushed myself to new Sonic Frontiers by getting excited about learning and asking what if repeatedly. Now, would I recommend creating music on a Linux computer? Absolutely not. Linux audio production requires a willingness to explore and adapt, moving away from a solely commercial mindset and ignoring the allure of the latest software being shilled by influencers. If you don't think you can live without the latest audio software being advertised to you, you probably should stick with what you're doing. But if you feel stuck and you're looking for a new way to create music, this shift in mindset might really help you. Lending itself to the Linuxy way of doing things, the Jack Audio Connection Kit, or Jack for short, 
plays a crucial role in low latency audio recording and connectivity. Years ago, when I first started using Linux for audio, the Jack Audio Connection Kit immediately jumped out at me as a major benefit. Remember when I was talking about FL Studio 4 not offering audio recording? At the time to record audio, I would open up ACID, run FL Studio as a plugin, and record all of my audio takes in ACID, then bounce them back to FL Studio to finish a project. It always annoyed me that it wasn't easier to connect different audio programs together. Jack completely solves this problem on Linux, and that's just the start. Jack is well known for low latency, ensuring that audio signals are processed and routed with minimal delay. This real-time processing is essential for interactive audio applications and ensures a seamless audio experience. Many smaller, quote-unquote, DAWless type devices actually run Linux and Jack with some custom software running on top. It performs very well and it's super versatile. Jack's open source nature means it's free to use, inspect, and modify, like with DAWless devices. This freedom empowers users to customize their audio workflows, free from restrictions and dependencies often associated with proprietary software and hardware. You don't have to worry about a software update or lack of software updates breaking your gear. Jack offers unparalleled flexibility in routing audio signals. This is what immediately struck me about audio on Linux. It allows you to connect and customize audio setups, catering to diverse production needs. With Jack, users can harness the power of multiple applications and hardware devices, creating unique audio environments. Extending this further, Jack enables audio routing over a network, empowering musicians to collaborate seamlessly. With Jack, distance is no barrier. It allows for remote recording sessions and near real-time audio sharing across different locations. Long before network audio devices became commonplace, there have been ways to route audio signals over a local area network and share a clock across different devices. This has always struck me as a perfect use case for Linux in large studios, where mostly recording or tracking is taking place. Many smaller computers with integrated audio cards could be added to control rooms, recording studios, drum rooms, etc. Jack also ensures that all connected audio applications run in sync. Thanks to Jack Transport, you can sync up the playback and position of multiple audio programs. This synchronization prevents audio glitches, ensuring a smooth and uninterrupted audio experience, even with multiple applications in the mix. I've used this feature extensively when mixing audio for videos when I'm editing in Blender. Since it's possible to sync multiple audio applications at once in Linux, many Linux producers lean on what's commonly referred to as a session manager. There are multiple different implementations of session managers, but I believe the best option here for most users is Carla. You can open and route audio between applications and plugins of different types and control transport all from one interface. Personally, I like to write shell scripts for each project that initiates a few applications I'm using, then handles the connections once applications are loaded. I often do this with Reaper and Sunvox so I can handle audio recording and manipulation in Reaper while sequencing and customizing synths in Sunvox. When I've recorded and arranged all the various aspects of the track, I can pull stems from either Sunvox or Reaper and complete the mixing and mastering. Many users new to Linux have found that the Jack Audio Connection Kit and Pulse Audio, the traditional desktop audio server, do not play well together. This is absolutely true, and while there have been bridges to fix this problem available for ages, Pipewire emerges as a more modern audio routing system for Linux. Now, Pipewire offers seamless integration with applications that would traditionally be handled by Pulse Audio the regular higher latency desktop audio, and it largely simplifies audio routing. It also allows you to run multiple processes at different sample rates, which is just wild. If you're not at all concerned with audio latency, then Pipewire is a great drop in replacement for Jack. And fortunately, it now ships with most modern Linux distributions by default. What this means is that you don't have to spend a bunch of time learning how to configure your system to record and produce audio on Linux. It should just work. In my testing on all my computers so far, Jack still offers an edge in low latency performance over Pipewire. So I currently run Pipewire Bridge to Jack, with Jack handling all of my audio critical applications, such as DAWs and video editors. So to summarize, there's not much difference between Linux native DAW and something that you might be used to on Windows or Apple computers. Um, they all kind of do the same thing. Linux also has a serious lead as far as advanced audio routing is concerned uh, between applications, plugins, computers, and even over a wide area network. Again, that makes it an excellent choice for a studio environment where maybe you have multiple computers you want to connect together and uh, sync them. Uh, controlling entire sessions of different audio applications can be easy to customize and recall. If, for instance, you have a mastering workflow versus a mixing workflow, or maybe you want to set up sessions for every project, it's easy to do.
And Pipewire makes it easier than ever to get started making music on Linux since it ships as default on most major distributions now. Whether or not you decide to give Linux audio production a shot, I hope this video inspired you to think differently about the software, workflows, and mindsets you employ in creating music. Getting started with Linux is very easy if you have an older computer and you like to try things out. Uh, I encourage anyone to check it out. There's really nothing to lose but the time invested in trying. Thanks so much for watching today. I really appreciate it. I encourage you to subscribe if you think that this is interesting and you'd like to learn more. You know, future videos, I intend to demonstrate using some non-Linux native DAWs on Linux and also sharing a little bit more about different workflows and maybe how you can think outside the box and uh, think a little more creatively by using Linux. Until next time, keep creating, keep learning, and happy hacking.